Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. It's a beautiful sunny day here, and hopefully I've got some beautiful uh, sunny summer wines uh, ready to uh, titillate and tantalise my taste buds. Uh, um, I've got Vadeco. Uh, Vadeco, if you don't know it, uh, nothing to do with Vadello, or is it? People aren't. Well, I mean, once upon a time, maybe there was uh, some relation, but uh, the Verd bit uh, just means green, so uh, it's a vaguely green grape. Uh, weird thing is, uh, Vadeco uh, is at its, at its proper home, is this place called Rueda. And next uh, neighbouring bit to Rueda is Ribera del Duero, where they make honking big reds. Uh, and uh, then they make these rather uh, pretty, uh, delicate, fragrant whites in the, the bit next door. Do you understand? No, but that doesn't mean we can't enjoy them. So, uh, three of them are actually labelled Rueda, but the first one is just uh, labelled Castilla, Vino de la Tierra de Castilla. Uh, and it's the Castillo de Tomas Verdeco 2011. Now, Verdeco's got quite a bit in common with Sauvignon Blanc. It's got this, uh, uh, some of that same citrus fruit, some of that same uh, fragrance. What I do find, though, uh, it's got a little bit, maybe a bit more weight, maybe a little, little bit more honeyed waxiness. And uh, if, it is, if it has similar, similarities between Sauvignon from uh, any part of the world, it's more Bordeaux Sauvignon than the more uh, pithy, pungent uh, Loire and New Zealand style. And that's what you've got here. You've got a little bit of that, what I call the tinned pear freshness. Uh, it feels like it's going to have a bit of bite, so a lot of... A lot of zip and acidity, maybe a touch of grapefruit, and smells like perfect for a day like this. Fresh, easy, summery, very easy to drink. Has that, if Sauvignon fans should, should hoover this up. Um, it's like got, um, if you imagine a Sauvignon Blanc with maybe a bit of that gritty pear skin of Pinot Grigio, it, should, it should, really should be a wine for our times, combining the best bits of both those two grapes. And that's a delicious, young, fresh example. This one, next one, wine number two, um, is, uh, well, it's the Altozano Verdeco 2011, but it's not just Verdeco, it's Verdeco Sauvignon Blanc. And is it from Rueda? Actually, no, it's near again, this is another one. Uh, Vino de la Tierra de Castilla. So we've got two Vino de Tierras and two Ruedas, I hope. I think I've got that bit right. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I was saying about the, the similarities with Sauvignon um, that Verdeco has. Here, they blended the two together. Um, and this region actually does pretty good Sauvignon just by itself. Um, and, uh, the other grape that you'll find there is one called Viura. I've got a row of Spanish whites to uh, do as soon as I finish this. I'll, I'll be uh, going away powdering my nose. And so if you keep your eye out for another Spanish wine, white wine video, um, yeah, I think, that, I think there's, a, there's a, a, a Viura in there, although not from this part of the world. Uh, but let's see what it's like, uh, the, the Verdeco Sauvignon blend. Feels like this is going to be a fuller, weightier wine. Um, and the the first one was major, majoring on crispness and freshness. Here, there's um, yeah, it feels like there's a bit more uh, plumpness, uh, more peachy fruit. Uh, I'm not sure where, whether that's coming from. I, don't, I, I always think of both Sauvignon and Verdeco as being being on the crisp side. So uh, not sure where that peachiness is coming from. So while it but while it's going to be a fuller-bodied wine, I still have a feeling that I'm going to prefer the first one. But let's see. And it's got some of that zesty citrus and pear skin character of the first one. But it doesn't have the daintiness of the first one. Here, it feels like they've tried to make a, a, a fuller-bodied wine. 13%, um, I think both of them are 13%. Uh, but yeah, the first one's lighter on its feet, more delicate, more fragrant, more the sort of wine I want on a day like this. Let's try the next one down, which is, uh, we are in Rueda here, uh, so Lagaris Verdeco uh, 2011. I think all of these are 2011. And we're back to that pithiness of the first one. It uh, feels like th this is, is going to have uh, more, more of what I'm looking for from Verdeco. Uh, so there's a bit of nuttiness there. Uh, there's a little bit of, um, yeah, that pithy pear skin. Um, maybe a little bit of the citrus. Uh, maybe even something slightly more exotic. A bit of guava. Maybe even a touch of mango in there. But again, it feels precise, dainty. Touch of mineral too. And when you come to taste it, this green apple acidity kicks in cleans your mouth out because it's funny that the wine is actually quite full bodied but because of this uh, mixture of the citrus that touch of green apple again that pear skin that I'm getting um, uh, it feels like the, the, the wine uh, leaves your mouth refreshed rather than uh, uh, rather than uh, you're not left with a slightly clumsy flavour you're left with a nice uh, good summery flavour uh, probably my favourite so far of that one 
Final one. Uh, Floor de Vetus at Verdeco 2011 from Rueda. Uh, I did a, a couple of uh, Ribera del Dueros from these guys in a recent video. Um, and this is the white wine they made. Actually, the lowest alcohol so far. Um, so, previous ones have all been 12.5% uh, alcohol. Uh, sorry, 13%. And uh, this weighs in at 12.5%. Is it a dainty way in which to finish? The answer is yes, it smells good. It smells like it's got the, uh, um, it, like a fresher version of the one before. I mean, the first, the, 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 the Ligaris was fresh enough, but here it feels like there's got a bit more pithy poise and more mineral precision. Uh, let's see if it carries through when you come to taste it. And that's pretty good. Um, what it does is it takes the uh, takes the good bits of that one, that uh, that bit of the apple, that bit of the um, uh, the mineral and the, the citrus and the pear, and adds in even more of the minerally spine. Um, and the weird thing is that it, yeah, it's half a degree lower than the in alcohol than the the, the previous three, but um, it seems to be the fullest in flavour, like quite light in body but full in flavour. That, that's the way I like my wines rather than the other way around. I mean, you, you can do these clumsy, glumping wines that can be extremely full-bodied but in terms of um, uh, complexity and depth of flavour they're a bit lacking but here it's, it, it, they've got it the right way around and uh, pretty tasty wine actually a pretty tasty quartet I, mean, I wasn't a huge fan of the Altazano but uh, uh, it's uh, there are there are far worse wines out there um, but yeah go out buy some Vodeco enjoy it enjoy it in summer and um, actually enjoy it in winter too just enjoy it see you soon